Good morning, everybody. My name is Robin Dyer. I'm the head here at Ampleforth, and it's my great pleasure to welcome so many of you from all over the all over the UK and other parts of the world to our eOpen morning. We've been in touch with you to find out what you would like to hear about this morning, and I've asked some students and staff to help provide this information as we go along. We have one hour and we'll try not to run over. Quite a few of you are looking at year seven entry and Dr. Moses, head of year seven and eight, and one of our year seven pupils are with us this morning. Please do ask questions as we go along through using the chat function. And you'll find that at the top right hand corner of your screen, it looks a bit like a speech bubble. We will, we will try and address these questions as we go through um, and we'll answer in greater detail when we speak with you on the phone after the live event. Many of you have taken up our pre-arranged appointments and for those who haven't, a senior member of staff will be ringing you today or early next week. For all you children watching, looking at people like me talking on a screen is not nearly as interesting as coming to meet us in this beautiful place. So I hope you've managed to watch the video that was playing about school life before I appeared. If not, please have a look at our website where you can find it under the eOpen Morning tab. You'll also find videos there which give you a tour of some of the boys and girls houses. What you can't see over these screens is that Ampleforth is one of the most beautiful schools in the world. Set in a gorgeous North, North Yorkshire Valley with stunning views and historic buildings. Our location is a huge asset and there can be few better places for young people to grow up and experience the joys of the countryside and all that it has to offer. It is teenage heaven here with a vast amount of protected open space to run free, a huge range of activities and of course lots of friends to share the experience and make it really fun. Our students absolutely love being here. And whilst we're all stuck in lockdown, they're telling us how much they miss, not just the atmosphere and social life of school, but this whole gorgeous place. It feels like a real home to them. And this never changes, even long after they have left the school. Old Amplefordians love to come back and visit the community and this special valley. I mentioned the importance of connection to place because we are unashamedly a full boarding school with a busy school life and activities going on seven days a week. Apart from exiats, our, our students do not go home at weekends. We have day students, about 18% overall, but they're all fully immersed in school life and are usually here seven days a week. This full boarding allows students to completely immerse themselves in our community and everything the school has to offer. It allows the time and space to provide for our students a true compass for life. What do we mean by compass for life? At its core is Catholic education and Benedictine values, developed successfully in education all over Europe for centuries and by Ampleforth for over 200 years. The essence is, whether you are a Catholic or like me, not, we recognise that every person is of equal value and has unique talents. It is our duty to draw out these talents so that everyone becomes the very best version of themselves. Through this, the whole community thrives and prospers. And our community here is very strong and extremely welcoming. When I first arrived last summer, I was bowled over by the friendliness and warmth of the students and staff. In 34 years of teaching and 17 years of leadership in a school in the south of England and one here, I can honestly say that I have not encountered anything like it. It is very special indeed and a huge strength of this place. My agenda as head is to make our compass for life even more compelling and relevant for today's world. 
We teach well. Our results are impressive. Our students sing and perform music beautifully, act superbly, play sport to a high level. But all these things are not enough. We have a higher mission, which is to ensure that ample Fordians emerge from here, go on to university in the world of work, and are properly ready for these challenges. It is a national disgrace that so many businesses find that students arrive with fantastic degrees, but often without the skills, the attitude or the values that companies are looking for. At Ampleforth, we are developing much greater independent thinking, learning and coping for our students in all aspects of school life. In every classroom, every conversation, in games practice, theatre rehearsal, our students will be drawn out of themselves by good questioning and constantly being encouraged to volunteer their opinions and ideas. These are critical life skills which will enable Amplefordians to thrive in the free range environment of university or the pressure filled job interview or when making a crucial pitch to new clients at work. They will show themselves to be flexible, resilient, problem solving, compelling communicators who employers want to hire and others want to work with. They will also be the grounded, caring and thoughtful people that ample Fordians always have been, who make the right decisions in life and know how to have a lot of fun. So my agenda fits perfectly with the Compass for Life. We are fully preparing our students for the challenges they will face in the world beyond our beautiful valley. These are exciting times to be at Ampleforth. For those of you wondering how currently this can be the case, with the world in lockdown and our students all at home, I would like to pay tribute to our amazing staff who have created the most fantastic program of online learning. Our students are fully engaged following their normal school timetables and everything this entails, including lessons, assemblies, tutorials, an enormous range of co-curricular activities, service and voluntary work, sport, music, chaplaincy, and of course, social life. The feedback has been excellent, not just from our own students and parents, but from many other schools too. Our online learning, e Ampleforth, is outstanding. Coronavirus permitting, we are committed to a full return to school in September and are making plans to ensure that our students and staff will be safe, will have every confidence in our arrangements. In the meantime, let's get on with our open morning. And I'd like first to briefly introduce our Dean, Father Ambrose, who is going to say a few words about the ethos of the school. Good morning, Father Ambrose. Morning, Robin, and thank you for that very kind introduction. Um, I think um, you'll know what I mean when we're all feeling perhaps a little bit um, on the washed outside this morning. It's the day after the last day of term and uh, we had a very fitting and wonderful celebration yesterday. Um, uh, what we call exhibition, the speech day, a real celebration of what's been um, born in the hearts and minds of the boys and girls here. And I'm going to just speak for a moment to to the boys and girls who are perhaps watching this. Um, just to say, um, once Robin and I are off the off the screen, really listen to our students. It's uh, it's them who make the real impact. Uh, impressive people, but impressive in their depth, in their roundedness of character, comfortable in their own skin. I often say that I've got the the best job in the school because um, every day I get to have conversations that give me this extraordinary glimpse into the emerging and uniquely wonderful personality that's uh, that's growing uh, and finding its feet and discovering its potential and of course from potential to realized future and hopes uh, for the world so i have a very exciting job in that way um, there's some dispute sometimes about who's got the best job but i really think that 
that forging those high quality relationships that draw out the unique uh, person is what we're all about and what I prize. And I guess you could say um, it's very much my role to make sure that that ethos, that driving force is at the centre of everything that we do. Um, so I'm very fortunate in that respect. I would say that lying right at the heart of, of a Benedictine um, education is our capacity to open up to each other. It's the capacity to forge really great relationships. But that starts with, um, it starts with being able to admire, um, to look around you. And we are spoiled here, as Robin said, spoiled not only in all that's going on, in the people that are here, the community life, but there's something very basic about our environment. We live in a very beautiful place, which inspires us, it draws us out of ourselves, and it teaches us to engage with the world around us and especially the people around us. And I'm gonna be slightly naughty um, because uh, just before I hand back to Robin, I want to give you a glimpse of the valley um, that he was talking about. So hold on to your hats. This is the extraordinary view um, from my window. I'm a very lucky person. And there you can see in front of you all that lies before us. Um, so that alone is formative uh, and an enriching experience. And Robin, although I'm a little bit silhouetted now because, uh, because of the view, I hand back to you. Well, not only is the ethos of Ampleforth in very, very good hands uh, with Father Ambrose, you, you can be sure of that. Um, he's also a director and producer of outside broadcasts of immense talent, as you can see. Um, we've had a number of questions about life at school and about boarding. And before I ask one of our students about this, it's worth reiterating that we are a full boarding school. Uh, lessons and sport fixtures run from Monday to Saturday with a busy program of activities over the weekend. We have nine houses overall with five boys houses, three girls houses and one house for our junior students in years seven and eight. Eighty two percent of our students are boarders and day students are fully integrated in all aspects of school and house life. They can often be found here on Sundays too. Our students come from all over the UK. Almost 30% are from overseas, the majority from Europe, but also from South America, Asia and Africa. We've had girls at Ampleforth for over 18 years now, and they make up around 40% of the school, although we're expecting this to grow to 50% over the next few years. Obviously, our students aren't here at the moment, and we sadly can't take you around the houses in reality. But as I said before, you can see some videos showing you around the houses on our website. OK, let's find a, a, out a bit more from uh, Cosmo, who's in year 11. Cosmo, what's a typical day at Ampleforth like for you? Um, it's great fun, actually. Uh, Ampleforth are very good at providing lot, a range of activities to keep us occupied so there's never really a bored moment, um, whether that be sport, music or art or whatever you like really. Um, and even if there isn't an activity going on, there are always students where you can have fun with, for instance, football in the evenings is quite popular with the students, especially in my house. Well, that sounds great, Cosmo. Um, what did the school do to help you um, uh, at the start, when you first arrived? Well, when I first arrived, the house staff were immediately inviting, warming and welcoming, which was definitely a good thing because I was I remember being quite nervous when I first joined. And then there were also the upper years who immediately make you feel very welcomed because they've been there before, they've experienced it. And that's definitely a positive. And the school also organises uh, for an uh, inter-house uh, tug of war and the raft race on the weekends, which is great fun. So that, I mean, just the busyness of life from what you're saying helped you, helped you settle in. And what's house life like, really like, Cosmo? 
uh, it's very similar to home almost because you're with people you're comfortable around the house staff although they're very well warm and welcoming you're not afraid to talk with them and around them and you know who are the key people in your house would you say i mean how does that work out so you've got your tutor for your year who is always there to, for you to speak to and you can talk to him mainly about lessons but also about house and personal life and then of course you've got your friends around you constantly and that's just a big bonus and if, if i can ask you this cosmo where do you live i live in scotland and near edinburgh okay so what about getting here uh, from there because that's a that's quite a journey isn't it i mean do you use the school travel service to get here yes there's a travel service from edinburgh a sort of supervised carriage where the scottish students uh, get from edinburgh to york okay and um i mean that's that's great isn't it and we also have um uh, uh, um school travel um from london and oxford so uh, students are supervised from those those places as well so thank you cosmo for that uh, we'll come back to you in a moment and i think it'd be good to talk to ik in year 10 about settling in uh, where are you uh, where are you at the moment ik Right now, I'm in Nigeria with my mother. Okay, great. So, I mean, you'd normally be travelling from Nigeria, I guess. Yes, usually. Yeah, and um, and, and school travel. I suppose you you fly into London and then you go up from use the school travel from London, do you? I do. Yeah. Okay. Great. So, I, I, IK, how was it? To, what was it like settling in for you, given the, the you know the, the enormous distance between Nigeria and here? Um, settling in at first um, for the first week it was a bit difficult, um, obviously because it was a new school, new people. I didn't really have uh, the same friends as last year, like my old school. Um, but everyone was really welcoming, especially the up years, because they they well, some of them had been here for the full five years, so. They knew how it felt like um, to be in a new school with not really knowing anyone, and uh, they helped me set. They helped me settle in, and my housemaster and my matron were also uh, played a huge part in me settling in. Well, that's great, and um, we heard a little bit from Cosmo. But what were the things that really helped you, other than your housemaster and matron and, and the other other boys in the house? What other things helped you to settle in? Um, well, I already knew um, a few people from Bali that um, came to the school and um, three other people um, that are in my year right now also came from Bali. So um, knowing some people helped me settle in and um, my uh, people in my year in my house, they were also all very nice, very friendly. We all respected each other, which is what um, kind of has made us bond together. And um, they all helped me settle in as well. Okay, that's great. And what sort of things were you doing that really switched you on in those first few weeks? Can you remember? Um, well, on the first school day, um, it wasn't an, a proper school day. We all kind of met up with all the, all the other houses and we got to meet every single person from each house and talk to each other, get to know each other better and what their house is like, what their house looks like, who their house master is. And, um, we all um, just got to meet everybody like that. Yeah, so socials and that sort of thing. And uh, Cosmo mentioned the tug of war. Now, can you remember what your how your house got on with the tug of war on that first weekend? Um, my house is St. John's and uh, we won the tug of war because we are the best house. <laughs> um, um, thanks to Mr. Curran that gave us um, all the encouragement and um, we just had great house spirit. Um, every house had great house spirit, but we just happened to have the best house spirit and we just ended up winning. Well, IK, thank you very much indeed for that. Uh, we'll, we'll come back to you later on. And, and I'd just like to say to parents who are listening, 
If you ask Amplefordians which is the best house, they always say their own, uh, which means all the houses are fantastic, but it does make it difficult choosing. Now, we've got a number of um, families here today who are looking at joining us in year seven. So why don't we go now to talk to Katie, who is in year seven, about life in the junior years and how she settled into Ampleforth. How easy, uh, how easy was it for you to settle in, Katie? I think for the first few days it was tough, but everybody was very welcoming and I, and I very easily settled in after a few days and um, it felt like I was there for, I'd been there for a long time and yeah, I feel like there was no difference between me and the others and I found it quite easy. Okay, well that's great to hear and um, not only were you one of the youngest students in the school and it's lovely to hear you, you've you fitted in nicely, but you're, you're also a day student and I would just wonder whether that made it any different for you perhaps than, than a boarder would, would find settling in. Not at all. I because if I wanted to stay some, uh, something, I was well, and they, I felt like all one big thing that was done. Okay, Katie, I'm, I'm sorry, we, we've got a slight problem with your line, so we didn't hear that, and I think I might come back to you a little bit later, see if we can work on that line. Um, so sorry about that. Um, Let's move now to Marcella, um, who I think is in Switzerland at the moment, and Marcella is Spanish. She's in your school, and uh, she joined us uh, just for the sixth form. So, Marcella, how are you? Um, hello, I'm good. Uh, so, yeah, I joined in year 12, which was uh, quite a good experience because I got a change for the sixth form and kind of a new environment because especially it's in the countryside which is amazing like you're far away from all the chaos of the city and just like you have concentration and peace to like study and just like live a calm life as well so it's really nice really good change um and yeah it was it was at first I was very nervous because obviously um, there was other people that were already at that school and I was new, but they were all very welcoming and having social events, for example, cheese and wine or windmill was amazing to be able to get to know everyone. So, yeah. Um, Marcella, I think you need to uh, explain to people watching um, when you say windmill, um, they won't understand that. <laughs> so windmill is the school pub where we're allowed two drinks but obviously with a meal and it's for the sixth form only and it's where you can just like relax and kind of separate from school work and they put some music on so it's really like kind of socializing and very good to just like talk and everything and have a good time with your friends so it seems like marcella that to, to be an international student uh, at Ampleforth is actually quite, it's pretty easy to be part of the community in fact very easy would you would you agree with that yeah i i would definitely agree with that i think um Ampleforth has a very clear idea that diversity is a gift and like it's very good to have like loads of people around and uh, of different countries and diff like different ethnic seeds and everything so it's really good yeah and um you know you, you arrived in year 12 do you get the do you ever get the feeling that uh, because you hadn't been around for say from year nine that that was somehow a problem no not at all like when uh, after three weeks i couldn't like distinguish who was new and who was old like it was completely mixed and everyone treats each other fairly and everything so i don't think there was a kind of awkwardness or gap at all no. okay well that's good and just one thing i want to clarify uh, marcella is um uh, the windmill is only open is it two times a week oh no it's three times a week so it's wednesday evenings uh saturdays and sundays 
and yeah it's open for two hours in the evening after prep and everything so yeah yeah it's, so it's, it's it's properly controlled i think the parents watching this might be quite keen to hear that we've okay marcella thank you very much indeed um now we're now going to move on to um the reason we're all here to be honest with you um apart from the things that we've talked about it's about in the end it's about academic life and learning and the classroom and i can't think of anybody better to tell us about academic life than dr hannah pomroy who is our fantastic deputy head dr pomroy good morning good morning robin thank you in the early years of the curriculum we aim to embed expectations of our unique and very special school, providing a platform on which to achieve excellence at GCSE and in the sixth form. Each learner is appropriately challenged. We understand the importance of numeracy, literacy and oracy skills, and these are placed firmly at the heart of our curriculum. At GCSE, students have 18 different subjects to choose from, and this increases to 22 at A level, with three BTEC qualifications also on offer. Examination results are consistently good, and if a student is capable of a top grade nine at GCSE or an A star at A level, they will have every opportunity to achieve it. Last year, 65% of our students went to Russell Group Universities, 72% went to Sutton Trust Universities. These are the two main groups of top UK universities. Several students also went on to European universities and we are very lucky to have a tailored programme of expert preparation for SATs for entrance to US universities, another very popular destination. Eight former Ampleforth students are currently studying at Cambridge University and we have another three in our upper six currently hoping to join them in October. We provide an enormous wealth of opportunities for students to develop their talents and their interests, their skills and aptitudes both inside and outside of the classroom. Our programme of academic enrichment and extension includes academically focused trips and visits to universities, lectures, plays, workshops outside of school, engagement in external competitions and by inviting in a wide range of diverse speakers. As Father Ambrose has said, what lies at the heart of an ample fourth education is seeking to truly know and love each child to help them to truly flourish. The Learning Hub will further enhance support for learning for students with additional needs. This is a brand new, specially designed area of the school and it combines collaborative learning spaces, areas for individual study, one-to-one -one and small group guidance and chill out zones staffed by our specialist team. Led by the new Assistant Head Support for Learning, a hugely experienced team of staff support students with both learning, uh, specific learning difficulties and provide a broader support for a range, a diverse range of different learning skills. There's also a constant supply of tea and toasts. Expertise in enabling students to have success at whatever level they are combined with a focus on developing students' independence and resilience, ensures they flourish. Thank you very much, Mr Dyer. Thank you very much, uh, Dr Pomeroy. I'm just wondering whether I could go back to Katie very quickly. Katie, I just wonder whether your line is now OK. Could we try it? Oh, it should be OK now. Well, let's just try. Um, you were talking about settling in as a, as a day girl. Can you just go back to that very quickly? Um, yeah, I feel 
between me and the borders uh, and if they ever do if the borders ever doing something at the weekend or have any fun activities going on day children are always very welcome to stay uh, to do them and we're always about to stay the night and it's just very welcoming and I feel like there's no difference between me and the borders and we're all just one big family. Yeah and I've, Katie that's a little bit better it's not brilliant but it's okay so that's good well done. Um, and there's a question that's come in on the, the chat function. When you first arrived in that first week, were you given quite a lot of work to do to help you settle in? Can you remember? Um, I joined in year five, but I, uh, I, we weren't too heavy on the work in the first week. But settling in, I remember my uh, like friends really being helpful. Uh, and then, like as you as you get further into the year, obviously you'll get more. Okay, well that's good. Thank you, Katie, very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Katie. Um, and now we're going to move uh, to Giles. Uh, Giles is in year twelve, and I think he should be able to tell us a little bit more about what Dr. Pomroy was uh, referring to academic enrichment and the academic opportunities that we have here. Good morning, Giles. Morning, sir. I think it's definitely best if I reiterate what Dr. Palmer I said. We have a fantastic academic division here at Ampleforth, and I think it really allows you to individually flourish as a student. I, um, what Dr. Palmer I said about the education experience being individually tailored to each individual student, I think is definitely true. And I think it really allows you to focus on your strengths and to sort of bypass your weaknesses. And I think that's really, really fantastic. Um, so far as academic enrichment goes, I've been on, I should imagine about 10 trips where I've gone out to various universities to do competitions or open days um, and that sort of thing, especially focusing on engineering because that's that's what I'd, what I'd like to do. But I, yeah, 100% agree with Dr. Pomeroy, it's fantastic. And it's interesting, um, Giles, thank you for that. It's interesting you refer to engineering there and um, we're getting some questions about science actually and, and the, the, the uh, strength or otherwise of science at, at the school. How would you characterise things in the science department? Um, so I only do physics for A level, but um, obviously I did all three sciences at GCSE and it was absolutely fantastic. I really enjoyed it. Uh, generally, I think our science department is really good. I think it offers a really unique experience uh, with really high quality staff and really high quality education. I thoroughly enjoyed it. OK, that's great. Well, thank you, Giles. We'll come back to you later. Um, we, we're getting some questions, as we always do, about sport. Uh, sport is a really important part of life here, and we're lucky to have many talented students and teachers too, as well as first class facilities. Our pitches and courts stretch out right across the valley and we have our own sports uh, centre with swimming pool, squash courts, fitness suite and so on. I think it'd be very good now to talk to a few of our students as they will have had different experiences with their sport. Um, it's supposed to be the cricket season at the moment, uh, which I'm sure we're all missing. Uh, but let's start with Cosmo because I know he enjoys his cricket. Cosmo, tell us about the cricket and other things that you do on the sporting front at Ampleforth. Um, well, Amforth has probably the most beautiful and well-maintained cricket pitches that I've ever seen. Uh, I wasn't really keen on cricket when I first joined, but Amforth has, defi Amforth has definitely sparked my uh, interest and love for the sport. Uh, it was quite, I was quite sad to hear that it wasn't really working. We weren't al allowed to do it because of the pandemic but I think maybe there'll be an opportunity to do it next term. But Amforth has definitely uh, really helped my cricket. So it's interesting you say that, um, uh, Cosmo, that you know, your, your, your cricket kind of grew in, in your imagination and in your skills and so on while you were here. How did that happen? Because you know, it's, not a, it's not a game normally that people would come to a, a little bit later. So what happened? Well, the cricket, the staff who taught us cricket, the coaches, were very sort of, not, they were very kind, nice and very supporting. And so I initially did cricket because I thought it would be a nice change, a nice sport to do. And I ended up really enjoying it. The staff help out. We have tons of 
activities to, for, for instance, cricket nets on Friday nights, where you can uh, socialise and meet people outside your year. Well, that's great. And um, actually, I have to say, I'm looking forward to doing some coaching on, on the Friday nights next year. Um, I think I'll, I'll free up some time in my diary to help you out, Cosmo. So we'll see you then. And I'd like to move now to IK in year 10, who we, who we met earlier. Now, IK is a keen rugby player. IK, I wonder what you felt when the uh, first 15 got through to the Nat West under 18 uh, national schools bowl final and then couldn't play because of the virus. What were your feelings on their behalf? Um, well, when the first 15 got to the national finals, I, like everyone else, was very excited. We were all very keen and very encouraging because we obviously wanted to, to win. Um, however, when it got cancelled because of the coronavirus, um, we were all sad. Um, we were all a bit gutted, but um, we recovered quite quickly and uh, just got on with it. I mean, we, we take, thank you for that, IK. We take our sport seriously here, but what would you think are the main sort of fundamentals of sport at Ampleforth? I mean, is it an elitist thing or is it sport for all? How, how do you see it? I feel like um, every it's sport for all. There's um, so many options at Ampleforth, boys hockey, girls hockey, there's um, tennis, swimming, rugby, there's football, there's so many options um, and um, everyone has a chance um, to do any sport they like and even if they're not really keen on sport, there's many other activities that they can partake in. Well that sounds very good IK, thank you very much. Um, now, if we can move to um, we move from sport for the time being, um, and we'll uh, go, I think, back to Marcella, um, who is involved in all sorts of things, including sport, Marcella, but other other things as well. So, could you tell us something about that, Marcella? So, so I'm I'm in sport, but I'm also involved in our charity, our school charity called Face Sport. Um, so what we try to do is we try to raise awareness of the ones that like need our help and those in need uh, by doing loads of like charitable events, for example, like a triathlon, like make everyone pay like one pound or so in order to like raise money. Uh, we're actually doing a project right now, um, which makes you, you have to dance for moves, nominate four people. Uh, nominate four people and it's so to to like kind of pass it on and donate four pounds which is really fun um and yeah so far we've raised about 108 pounds and it started like three days ago so it's quite good to see um yeah yeah okay well that's great um so i think you're a hockey player is that right yes i am and you've just mentioned dance what sort of what are you doing with dance? Can you tell everybody what how that works out? So so I also do dance lessons, but um, you can do any sort. You can also do drama lessons, music lessons. So there's like loads of things you can do for extra curriculum. Um, but I love dance, and in, within dance, you can either do ballet, tap tap dance, or modern dance. I prefer like modern dance. And, yeah, so uh, it's it's very fun. It's very good, and there's a teacher spe specialised for each. And at the end of the year, there's a dance show where all parents are welcome to see. And, and one of the things about dance, Katie, and uh, you know, uh, sorry, Marcella, sorry. Um, one of the things about dance is that girls like it, but sometimes boys are a bit shy about it. Now, how do we? What are we doing to to cope with that? So we also provide dance lessons for boys um, because we believe that everyone should pursue what they want and kind of like what uh, they they yeah want to do and kind of do what they love and nothing should like stop them at all. So yeah, same as we uh, sometimes the girls are also shy about about playing football and we still do with all like the guys when they go out to play themselves. So yeah, it's very inclusive. 
<laughs> okay. Thank you very much, Marcel. It was an interesting co-ed co point you made at the end there. How things uh, develop between the genders in different different activities. Good. Um, well, we've had some questions about music, and I know we have Anna, who's in year 12 on the line, and she's a very keen musician. Um, Anna, I wonder if you could tell us about uh, your musical life at Ampleforth. Yeah, um, so I joined Ampleforth in sixth form as a music scholar, um, so I'm quite heavily involved um, in lots of music activities. Um, but you know you don't have to be so involved and there really is something for everyone whether you kind of like classical music or singing or playing in a group and um, there's loads of opportunities that you can get involved in so i'm in Scola, which is school choir and it's for years 9 to 13 and there's also an SMA Scola. and um, so we sing we rehearse two three times a week and then we sing in the Abbey on Sundays for school mass, um, which is a really nice opportunity to um, kind of sing the pieces you've rehearsed in front of the whole school and show um, the progress you've made. Um, and then I'm also part of the orchestra, um, where I play the clarinet in the orchestra. Um, and we rehearse once a week and then play at various points throughout the year. Well, that sounds fantastic, Anna. I mean, that's a, you know, it's a, there are big commitments here, aren't there, uh, in the music that you do. Is that manageable time-wise? Um, yeah, I think all the teachers are really supportive um, and they know if you're too busy, you can um, just ask for help and they'll, you know, support you. And you can, um, there's always loads of time to practice your instrument and loads of people that you can go to if you're finding that it's too much. Um, and, you know, with the music also, it's a really great opportunity to make new friends across all the year groups. So you'll always, it doesn't, even if you're busy with it, it's really enjoyable because you're with new friends that you've made. and. Um, yeah, there's just so many opportunities. And which is your favourite instrument, Anna? Um, I really love playing clarinet or singing because I love to um, perform with other people in orchestras or choirs. Okay, now what's that behind you? Oh, oh well, I've got a piano there. But <laughs> um, do you want to play something? Or have you got an instrument there you want to play? Yeah, I can. I've got my clarinet. I can play. Oh. Well, that's lovely. I'm sorry to spring that on you, Anna. Okay. Um, ladies and gentlemen, Anna is just. Um, <laughs> I've um, taken her by surprise here, but uh, okay, Anna. Well, good luck with this. Just uh, just about thirty seconds. Yeah, that's okay. Okay. Good luck. Thank you very much. You. Little round of applause for Anna. That was really good. Um, under pressure, um, uh, it is actually remarkable how musicians at at the school uh, are so composed, even though um, you know it is difficult performing in public. And the quality of what they do, as we just heard from Anna, is exceptional. Now, I think Giles, uh, you're still on the line, aren't you? Of course, sir. Uh, you play an instrument too, don't you? Uh, yeah, I don't know if you class it as three instruments. So I play, I play guitars. I play at the moment. I've got oh, behind me that you probably can't see is a ba a bass guitar, classical guitar, and an electric guitar. 
And I think that really summarizes, I think, the, the range of music that you can get up to at Ampleforth. So I uh, played the electric guitar in Shack Rock uh, last year, which is our school rock concert, which is incredible fun. I really would recommend taking part or going to it. It's also run by Phase 4 and raises money for charity. And it's really, really enjoyable. Um, and I also played uh, in the school play, which was We Will Rock You, which was really fantastic acting and <laughs> really great fun. Um, but I've also played with the... Um, I've also played with the Pro Musica, which is the sort of advanced string group, and I was playing a Vivaldi guitar concerto with them, and I think that was that was also really enjoyable. You may might have been able to hear it at our exhibition, if you have access to that, I'm not sure. But yeah. Well, that's great, Giles, and uh, thank you both of you, Giles and Anna. You've got a full range of uh, things there that we um, students can, uh, can tap into, uh, which is exactly as it should be. Now, we're getting lots of questions about co-curricular activities. We've got a huge range here at Ampleforth. It's a great strength of the school. We've got almost two and a half thousand acres of land with everything from indoor and outdoor shooting ranges, our own school shoot, well-stocked fishing lakes, a Land Rover restoration club. Not sure about that, but I'm sure it's great fun. Thriving art, drama, music, as you've heard. Um, We've got our own pipe band. Actually, I think we met Cosmo earlier. He's in it, and it's the largest one that's south of the Scottish border. I think the Scots are finding that difficult to stomach. And even our own dance academy, as we heard from Marcella. So all students get involved in a number of activities over the weekend and Friday afternoons. And uh, uh, Friday afternoons are dedicated to this for everybody. The school has a particular focus, as we've heard, on charity work and on service. Our students are involved in lots of local community projects and the CCF, that's the Combined Cadet Force, which is hugely popular. We have Army and Royal Air Force sections. There's one person perhaps we should go back to on that. Uh, we just heard from him um, and he's just been appointed Senior Under Officer, which is the top cadet in the school. So Giles, if you could tell us a little bit about the CCF, that would be great. Okay, so I've been I've been in CCF since since year nine. I'm in year twelve now, so I've been been in there for four years, and it's something I've always really enjoyed throughout my time at school. Uh, we've done adventure training camps where we've done like rock climbing and canoeing in the Lake District, which was fantastic. I went with IK to um, Folkestone with the Gurkhas, where we were running a summer. Uh, summer camp which was again fantastic fun we had a lot of uh, we did a lot of stuff um training with the gurkhas and running around in the woods shooting things which is which we do in all years um everyone has access to it and it's really really fun um i thoroughly uh, recommend it but also something that isn't quite as uh, apparently obvious is the um soft skills we teach in the ccf uh i think leadership and um stewardship and um, a lot of our Benedictine core values um, are really reflected in the CCF and of course the army core values were actually written by an old Ampifordian who was uh, very very um, influenced by the Benedictine core values. Absolutely uh, Giles and that's a really good point that you've made there but just one thing I would like you to clarify for us all uh, when you said something about running around the woods shooting things could you explain that? <laughs> Oh yeah, sorry. I'll probably <laughs> make that very clear. But so every um, so at the end of the year, um, every um, sort of school year takes part in an exercise. So we have a remove exercise, which is uh, kind of your last exercise while you are being trained, and that is sort of your final assessment. Where at the end of uh, the year eleven, where you get we will be ta taught how to teach and how to lead. Um, you then have to put all those skills to the test in an exercise which was really good fun. I really enjoyed it, uh, even though it was freezing. Um, and that was fantastic. And then the year nine and 10 have a shared exercise where they're uh, sort of pitted against each other, which is which is always fantastic. And of course, we have the uh, the sixth form uh, in command of those two sections. And it gets quite competitive. I remember in year 10, the sixth forms were trying to take each other prisoner, <laughs> which is fantastic. But yeah, it was fantastic fun. OK, well, thank you, Giles. Very much. That sounds very good. Um, I'd like to go back to Anna, actually. Um, so, Anna, when you're not in lessons or playing beautiful music, what else do you get up to? Um, so this year I've been a part of something called the Friendship Holiday, which is, year, which is a year 12 um, activity. 
and we've done fundraising throughout the year to um uh to pay for a week of activities at Ample Source for a, school, for a group of students from a special needs school called Oakfield in Nottingham. Um, and the group of students basically come to Ample Force and spend a week with with us, like Ample Force students. And we do things like go to um, Lightwater Valley, which is a theme park, and Digger Land. Um, and it's just a great opportunity to um, make new friends and um, develop like relationships with people from different um, backgrounds from us and um, it's a really amazing experience um, and then also another thing that I've been part of is you can go to something called the Aquinas Society which is basically a student-led discussion group where um, we talk about topics and um, sort of maybe like ethical issues or current affairs kind of topics and it's a great opportunity to hear other people's opinions on things and kind of develop your own point of view and put your ideas across to a group of people. Um, but it's a really relaxed environment and, you know, everyone really respects each other's opinions and listens to each other. Um, so, yeah, so there's loads of, um, there's loads of activities. Those are just a couple I've done. Okay, Anna, thank you very much for that. And I'd like quickly uh, to go back to Cosmo because um, look, you're a cricketer, Cosmo, as we heard, but you're also interested in other things. And you might want to just talk a little bit about your time with the pipe band, which is fascinating, I think. Uh, yes, so I come from a school in Scotland who are obviously very proud of their pipe band. And I was actually surprised that Amforth had a pipe band when I came here. And it's really good. Uh, we have a really good uh, teacher who teach who taught me the drums and helped me improve because I play the drums and he also co he takes us on trips so we go to Scottish schools competitions uh, every year we also go to other schools to do workshops and we went to Berlin last year for a pipe band trip uh, what I found helpful as well is not only the staff helping me to improve also the older students who helped coach me and help me get better And just quickly, if you just list some of the other things you do, so people get an idea of the range of things that you, you, you can do, uh, Cosmo. Uh, so, is this in the pipe band? No, no, in your, your, other, your other activities. Oh, uh, there's pipe band, there's, uh, I do uh, something, I do country sports yeah. as well. So that's uh, fishing, helping out with the shoot. Uh, I also do lots of other things, uh, maintaining the land and helping keep, uh, helping maintain fences and walls and helping around the school. Okay, that's really good. Thank you very much indeed. Um, and now I'm going to go back to um, uh, Giles. Uh, we heard from Marcella earlier about transitioning into year 12 and you know how that works. But Giles, if I, if I could just um, ask you this question. You, you joined in year nine, um, but what would you say are the key differences between sort of years nine, 10 and 11 and then going into the sixth form? I think uh, a lot of the a lot of the difference is um, I th uh, the amount of freedom you have. I think when you're in when you're in year nine, you have a very sort of structured learning environment because that, that's what works for GCSE. And I think that's uh, when you're doing so many subjects at quite um, well a less um, intense level of detail, I think it's very important for you to sort of have that structured environment because it means you can really like learn what you need to learn. It really gets you the grades, and that's something the school it worked very well for me. And then as you move as you move up into uh, sixth form, you start having a lot more free periods. You can have free periods in house, and I think a lot of the uh, the learning pressure is then on you, and it really allows you to expand and do what and do what you think is suitable and it's it means you can read around your subjects a lot more do a lot more of the extracurricular stuff i'm currently working on an extended project qualification or epq which is sort of like a vocational as level i think and um i think that's that's probably the main difference of course we also get access to the windmill which is fantastic um we'll leave the windmill alone i think we've covered that nicely um giles but 
just to, uh, just to um, take some questions that have come from the floor, I've got a question here from Annabelle. Um, and she's interested in um, what prep is like for sixth formers. How does that work? Are you supervised? Uh, so we're, we're sort of semi-supervised. We're pretty much mostly just left to our own devices, but there's usually a member of staff who wanders around um, doing check-ins and stuff. And uh, what's fantastic is because they're also members of the academic staff, you can often get help in whatever subject you need help in um, when that's happening. So uh, I'm in St Thomas's house and we do all our preps in our rooms uh, starting through uh, year nine with the year nine, tens and elevens getting much more sort of heavy supervision. But again, it's um, I think a lot more of the onus to work is on you as a student when you move into sick form. And I think that's uh, reflected in the amount of supervision you get. Yeah. And I mean, you know, the idea here is to uh, prepare people for university life, um, which is obviously very important. I mean, if, if we are uh, processing you, as it were, every minute of every day, I don't think you'd you develop the uh, independence that you need to, to deal with university. If you could, Annabelle also asked about class sizes, Giles. Um, how, do, how does that work out? What, 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 what have you experienced in terms of class sizes? Uh, so the class sizes are, they're relatively small. We usually have sort of a maximum of 15, 20 people in the class. Um, but it also, it depends on the subjects you do. I think some of the more popular subjects have um, slightly bigger classes or sometimes they have smaller classes because they've been broken down into multiple sets. But uh, um, the class sizes, I've never, I've never had a problem with class size and fourth. I've never felt that it's been too big. Um, and most classes, I'd say, probably have about ten students in. Yeah, that's right. Thank you very much, uh, Giles. Now I think we'll go back to the whole issue of uh, years seven and eight. Um, we've got a number of families who are watching who are interested in those years. And we have on the line Dr. David Moses, who's head of those two years, uh, and he can tell us about life for those youngsters in years seven and eight. Good morning, David. Morning, Robin. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, great to be here. Great to be speaking to you. So I'm David Moses. I'm head of seven and eight. I've been with Ampleforth quite a long time. I've been here since 2005. As a teacher of English and assistant housemaster, housemaster of St John's for nearly eight years, and then moved to uh, care for the juniors in 2016. Years seven and eight have their own dedicated house before moving on in year nine to a senior house of their choosing at the college. I'm the housemaster. I have, uh, like other houses, a chaplain. Father John is our chaplain. We have two wonderful matrons and uh, a very strong team. We're very proud of our junior children. They're really hardworking, they're kind, they're well-mannered, uh, they're full of joy, they're pleasure to be around. They are spiritually very active, taking great care of one another and taking great pride in their important roles in leading prayers and mass. They're very, very competitive on the sports field. They take their team sports especially very, very seriously. They aim for excellence and uh, you will hear something from Katie in a, a moment about that. Um, they're intellectually curious and we encourage them to be inquisitive about the world around them and to be outwards looking as well, especially given the remarkably beautiful setting in which they have their schooling. They're really interested in the arts. We have some very strong artists, actors, dancers, musicians and vocalists and lots of the children in seven and eight uh, sing with the scholar in the Abbey Church. They don't just play at things, they devote themselves to excelling and it's become rather a mantra with them that excellence is not a skill, it's an attitude. They're independent learners. Boarding helps them to develop self-discipline and self-reliance and day students are fully included. It's a really caring family atmosphere and it helps them to feel their own self-worth and to reinforce the importance of courtesy and good manners. We know every one of our children really, really well. The learning is tailored to each child and there's a very wide choice of co-curricular activities which allows us to draw them out and to celebrate their unique talents. So we have a, a really busy programme of activities and trips um, where we have fun together and build friendships and that happens over the weekends as well. So we're full boarding, 
we have a little bit of flexibility, but really, really important that that social program over the weekend. Our mission is to support and care for our children so that they arrive in year nine fully integrated and prepared to thrive in the senior years. Thank you. David, if I could just um, uh, come back to you on one thing. The entry system that we have for year uh, coming into year um, at the age of 11. Um, can you speak briefly about what the entry system is uh, for the 11 year olds? Uh, coming into year seven, uh, there, there's an admissions test. We would look for reports as well. Um, and they will come in and start seven and eight have their own curriculum. They have their own program, which takes them up to 13. We call that the St Martin's Certificate. And uh, so it's a specially tailored program. We don't do common entrance at, uh, at Ampleforth with year seven and eight. So there's a, a greater enricher program, uh, enrichment program. It allows us to, to cover a lot more. Um, it, we like to see uh, children before they come into year seven. Uh, we like them. We off, uh, uh, encourage them to have taste of stay with us, and uh, and then we can have a look at, uh, at what their strengths are and, and where they might need some help. Yeah, and and the entry test itself doesn't require anything of the student in ter terms of um, revision, does it? It doesn't. We don't do pre-testing, and we we don't uh, encourage them to prepare for that. We want to see them as they are when they arrive with us. Okay. Well, David, I think it'd be great if we could get Katie back um, and ask her a few questions. And David, if you do this, because you, you, you work with Katie, about some of the things that she's doing with her life, you know, academic and uh, sporting and so on. Uh, and Katie, we really hope your connection is now going to work. Could you turn your camera off? Uh, because I think that might be the problem. If we can just get a bit more uh, bandwidth, as it were, going through the microphone it might work so david if you've got some questions for for katie thank you can you hear me katie uh yes sir that's brilliant i know that you're really really busy and that you have a really busy life here can you tell us about some of your extracurricular activities and what you do i do a lot of extra um extra activities um the one i probably do the most extra is karate and I've been doing that for a long time now. I've been doing it since I was six and I do it on Wednesday nights with school. We go across to the college and we have a really good time just um, learning how to fight. And um, it's great because I love teaching the, the um, people who have just started. And uh, it's just great fun because the teachers join in with us as well, which is a good wow. laugh. That's fantastic. Tell us about your grades and your belts. How how have you progressed over the last two years? Um, in, I've been doing a lot of um, a, um, a lot of karate and grades wise. Um, you just you do for about you do it for about four months and then you take a like a test in front of your instructor instruct um instructor. I don't know how to say that word. Sorry, can I ask you to talk about your hockey? Because I know that you particularly enjoy hockey. Yeah, I love hockey. I um, I was in the club before I joined St Martins. Um, and uh, when I came to St Martins, they they have amazing coaches, and they coached me to uh to the best I could be, and they pushed me towards um go, getting into north yorkshire which is a big achievement for me wow that that is fantastic absolutely fantastic um you, you have this busy day but there's some important stuff as well that you do isn't there which is in the classroom um I, one of the questions that we get quite a lot when people are looking at, at year seven and eight is about how you manage prep and how you work independently can you tell us something about that katie well, we always have a prep slot. We always have a prep slot at the end of the day, and there's always a teacher in the room in, in case you're struggling that you can ask for help. And um, you can always ask your friends sitting next to you. Um, uh, and it's and if you still have to catch up on prep after the prep session, you always have your free time and times that you're able to finish all your work. 
that's fantastic and I, and I think that you have somebody supervising you at prep all the time but like everybody in the college every every student has a tutor what, what what's that all about Katie how does that work well a tutor she the um, a kind of like a teacher that's been assigned to your set to help you with every anything you're struggling with work or like emotionally and they help you just get through things and all, and if you're struggling to talk to somebody they're always there for you that you can talk to them that's wonderful um i'm asking you lots of questions i know but i've got to ask one final one which is um what's the best thing about your experience of year seven and eight katie i think it's definitely the like the friends you make in um in year seven and eight it feels like you're just one big family and you've known them for ages there's a there's a, a lot of people that only joined this year but it feels like i've known them for my whole life that's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Dyer. Well, thank you. Thank you, Katie. And thank you, Dr. Moses. Really good. Um, I think we're going to go through some of the uh, questions that have come in on the Q&A very quickly. So if you can be ready on your buzzers, team, I'm just going to fire a few questions at you and nice brief answers. Um, IK and Marcella, very quickly, uh, do you think there is a, that you could say there is a best time for international students to join the school uh, and I think by best time we're talking about a year so uh, IK first um, personally I would say year nine because in year nine everyone's new and um, so you get to meet other international students and also students in the UK and so everyone just bonds like that. It's a straight connection. Everyone gets to know each other quickly. So it's just fair on everyone that way. That's great, IK. And what would you say, Marcella? Um, I don't think there is a best time. I think you're welcomed at Amberpool for any time, really. But um, for me, I think in year 12, obviously, because I came into year, into year 12, um, because it, it's new. Sixth form is supposed to be like a change kind of thing and same as at university. So it's good to kind of change and like know new international and like national people. So yeah, I would say year 12. But we, we get uh, Dr. Moses, we get uh, students coming in in year seven from overseas, don't we? We do, uh, Robin. We have people coming in to year seven and eight and some international students decide uh, to come for a term or maybe a year to try it out and invariably stay with us. They enjoy it so much. So we're open to uh, to negotiations. We'd love to see uh, lots more international students coming into year seven and um, they come from all over the world. So we have uh, we have expatriated Hong Kong, uh, Hong Kong. Uh, students, Hong Kong Chinese students. We have uh, students from Germany and France and Spain. Uh, right. Yeah, all over the world. Thank you very much. Uh, and um, uh, from Miguel, uh, how difficult is it? Uh, and I think this is for uh, IK and Marcella. And I think we've probably answered this uh, before. But anyway, let's go back to it. How difficult is it for foreign students to adapt relative to UK students? <sighs> Marcella, yep. So, so my younger brother uh, joined in year five uh, all by himself while my parents were in Spain and he found it really easy to like, you know, like adapt and everything. Like at first you get homesickness, of course, and but like you get really like sad and stuff. But I think as long as you have like a, a good team of like you know friends and we have an amazing like tutors head of houses and everything so i think it becomes much easier but it's just about adapting and everything so i would say like maybe a week or two maybe adapting okay for you very quickly one week was it or two weeks or how, how long um i personally feel like it was one week because um in amforth like we see there's a mix of um people from outside of um, England and people from inside and everyone's just a little bit curious to find out like about each other's cultures, about where they're from, how it is there and like the climates and things like that. So um, it was quite easy to settle in for me personally. That's great. Well done. Thank you, Marcella and IK. Really good. Um, and uh, Father Ambrose, I think you're 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 somewhere. You're still in the same postcode as us, Father Ambrose, or are you? <laughs> Yes, I am. Yes. 
we've got a question in, question from Miguel. Uh, can you explain how the school promotes spiritual and Christian life among students? Yes, yeah, so, well, I mean, I think anybody who's had direct experience of that knows that the greatest uh, way or the greatest promotion and witness to the Christian faith is actually young people to young people. Um, and one of the great things about, or one of the fruits about this uh, E Ampleforth experience we've had during the uh, lockdown is that we've had to rely much more heavily actually on, on our own students articulating uh, what it means uh, to cultivate a spiritual life, what it means to guarantee the value of the other uh, in God, and they've done so brilliantly. Um, so I would say, first of all, um, our job is to nurture that in the students, to give them the, uh, the, uh, the words, um, to immerse them in a culture and to give them a life of prayer. Now, obviously, our life of prayer here reflects very much our monastic way, which is in brief, our monastic way is to keep our daily experiences of life, so ordinary day to day experience of life in dialogue with our faith, in dialogue with scripture. So that, if you like, is, is the essential uh, ingredient. But as I said earlier, it's also a highly contemplative experience. And that's a word that means that um, as as a Benedictine, uh, institution, a Benedictine school, we're always looking to be attracted by things. I think that's a really important quality of our spirituality, our spiritual life, is that is that things should draw us in. We should feel attracted not just to each other and the goodness that is in each other, but um, attracted to all that inspires, um, all that comes from God. Now, in very concrete terms about the spiritual life, um, there's an awful lot of opportunities. It's about us creating lots and lots of opportunities for students to find depth in the spiritual life. And very often our students, um, I think, become quite accustomed to this quite quickly. Often I don't think they realise how rich an offering it is compared to other schools. It's been mentioned that there are chaplains for each house. So there's that witness, first of all, but also everybody is clearly studying uh, theology, Christian theology up to a degree. Um, <clears throat> plus, there is a, a rich daily round uh, of, of prayer and moments for reflection. Yeah. Thank you very much, Father Ambrose, for that. Um, and now we're going to, th these are 10 second answers, please, everybody, because we've opened right. by 12 minutes. Um, and I'm just going to go down the list of questions here. Do we offer basketball and swimming classes? Giles, do we do that? Uh, I don't think we do basketball classes, but the courts are open for people to use. We do do swimming. And I think actually we do arrange basketball for those who want to do it, but not here. I think we go to another school to do that. Uh, I think that's right, Dr Pomeroy. Well, as Giles said, we have got a basketball facility and yeah. it sort of waxes and wanes depending on the students that we've got each year. OK, good. And while you're there, Dr Pomeroy, could you tell us something about equestrian? Yeah, we're very, very lucky. We've got a fantastic equestrian arena, um, which is used really regularly. The students do that um, either in their activity time. Sometimes they do it in their um, free time. Sometimes they use games. Um, slots to do it. They go off to lots of competitions, um, have riding lessons um, and one-to-one -one tuition. So lots of equestrian going on. Thank you. And a um, uh, question here from Holly, um, probably Marcella, I think, or Anna could an answer, answer this question. Do many girls get involved in the Land Rover Restoration Club? Um, I'm not personally involved in it, but um, I think there are definitely girls who do it. And, you know, everything at Ample that's a co-ed school, so everything's open to um, girls and boys. So they definitely be encouraged if they wanted to take part. Yeah, that's right, Anna. And Marcella, any views on Land, Land, Land Rover restoration? Is that something that you are interested in? No, no, I unfortunately don't do it, but I would encourage it. <laughs> it looks fun. 
Oh, I'm sure you would. And um, uh, Father Ambrose, just last one for you. Do we have students of other faith? Uh, you're muted. Well, well, <laughs> well, Father Ambrose. I don't know, I don't know how that happened, Robin. Um, uh, <laughs> back on yes we do um and um i would say that uh for our parents talking to them um usually they're drawn by the catholic ethos uh in the knowledge that uh, that embedded in that ethos is the unique value of every student so we welcome people irrespective of their background whether it's faith culture whatever it is key thing is to recognize the unique uh, value of the individual thank you very much indeed and thank you for all, all your questions there are more that we haven't quite managed to get to um, so um, we will pick up those um, in the booked appointments that some of you have made and also follow-up phone calls that um, members of staff will be making to you uh, for those of you who haven't made booked appointments um, the people who will be ringing you will be house parents, members of the SLT, senior leadership team and from the uh, admissions department and they'll try to get back to you in the next few hours or early next week to answer those queries, outstanding, outstanding queries. Uh, you can find uh, admissions information on our website and if you didn't manage to watch the video earlier this morning or would like to look around one of the houses, you'll find those on there too. The admissions department is open over the summer holidays, so please do get in touch if you have any further queries. Well, this has been uh, quite an event. We've crammed in a lot of different issues, and I'd like to thank uh, the students for um, dealing with those questions, sometimes impromptu, some, sometimes uh, afflicted by uh, Wi-Fi difficulties and things like that. I think you've been really good students. Have a lovely summer holiday. You deserve it, all of you. Um, and we'll be holding e-open days, uh, obviously in the future, um, and hopefully uh, uh, actually in the valley, actually here. But we will be having an e-open day uh, on Saturday 19th of September. Uh, if you'd like to come back and uh, uh, ask a few more questions, please do. Or if you have any friends who you think might be wanting to join us, then that would be great. So anyway, uh, it'd be great to see you here in the Valley in the future. Um, and uh, with that, uh, I think it's time to say goodbye to you all. I hope you have a really good summer. Thank you for joining us this morning. Goodbye. <laughs>